Hello again and welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got part two of my restoration or attempted restoration of the, the Pine 19D receiver from late 1948 early 1949 and you might recall that during part one we had a look at the radio discovered there was a, a fault with the rectifier valve which managed to correct and we very carefully brought it up on the variac and did indeed um, discover that uh, she was um, for the most part working so next uh, jobs were to fit some new components uh, to look at the, the capacitors and the resistors that needed replacing and then um, hopefully um, see if we can progress to some kind of alignment of the uh, of the IF stages and then the, uh, the the RF stages so let's uh, let's go and have a look how I've been getting on okay well here we are looking at the underside of the uh, the Pi 19D and as mentioned in previous video next job was to replace the capacitors which I've done so there's a, a couple here a couple there uh, there's one here, uh, another couple there, a couple of electrolytics there, another electrolytic there. I've already I've replaced them with um, obviously with modern components that are much smaller, and um, uh, I've used either the same or a greater working voltage. I've also replaced that um, double can capacitor, and uh, if I now turn the chassis back over, um, you can see that. Uh, just be careful, there's the, the can capacitor sitting there and uh, that's the original, it was um, uh, plain aluminium, this one's got a, a plastic covering on. Uh, but hereby hangs a bit of a, an interesting tale because um, when I eventually got the capacitor out I noticed it says uh, RS um, on the brand and certainly RS means radio spares to me or RS components as it's called these days and so I did wonder um, was this uh, an original component? I wondered that for a couple of reasons. Firstly because of that brand and secondly because when I came to unsolder these wires um, as soon as I applied the iron to those tags the wires came off very easily. They weren't wrapped around and most of the other capacitors had been wrapped around so I wondered if this had already been uh, replaced and I'm, I'm pretty convinced it has. RS uh, radio spares certainly did exist at the time this radio was made in, in 49. Um, they didn't actually start selling, according to the internet, they didn't start selling um, spares to uh, repair shops until the early 50s. So I suspect that's a component, uh, there isn't any data or anything on it. I suspect it's a component from probably the 1960s or something where there was a, a little bit of uh, repair work uh, probably done on this set. Um, I think most of the other components um, are original and certainly uh, things like that uh, which is an original wax capacitor uh, that's definitely original um, but some of the electrolytics um, are clearly uh, fairly ancient to that brandy's hunts there don't get a terribly good write-up um, on the internet as a capacitor brand but um, anyway, there, we, there we go so they're all replaced which is great so we need to see if um, she still works but um, uh, one more comment to make, and that is the, um, you might recall from an earlier look at the circuit diagram, uh, we've got a full wave rectification here with, uh, with that valve there, and when I was producing a, a list of components I needed to either buy or check if I'd got in stock to replace the capacitors, I initially assumed that that, that can, which the one I've removed is 50 plus 50 microfarads. I just assumed that um, that that was the 50 microfarad capacitors here, and uh, where's it gone here? I assumed that was the pair. But then when I started looking underneath, I came across um, some other capacitors here, uh, which are also um, 50 microfarads. Uh, and I was initially confused. I thought perhaps the circuit diagram was wrong. But when I actually started having a look at the way she was wired it was very obvious that the double can is of course exactly what you'd expect it's the initial smoothing uh, pair here and here so that one's directly connected to the, the output from the cathode of the rectifier valve uh, it goes through a little bit 
of the output transformer which does work as a choke. There's a bit of a resistor there and another smoothing circuit and the second half of the capacitor to produce the final version of, uh, of the smoothed uh, B plus for the, for the valve uh, anodes. Um, and other thing to note about uh, V5, the rectifier valve, is that it's uh, the AZ31 is a directly heated valve, so it doesn't have a, a separate cathode, which means the uh, high tension output is taken from one side of the of the filament. Now you might recall again from part one that um, it was the filament that was open circuit in this rectifier valve, and. Uh, if I get the AZ31 data sheet, it's a very simple valve, simply four connections, two filament connections and two anodes. Um, now, everything I've read about full wave rectification circuits and smoothing capacitors is that if you increase the value of the capacitor, you can potentially uh, put more stress on the rectifier valve because not only are you asking it to supply the radio and the circuits, you're also asking it to supply a, a larger amount of energy to charge up that capacitor and of course it's full wave so that's that's happening a hundred times a second as each pulse alter comes from each alternate anode. Um, so the, the data sheet actually says that the maximum value of the reservoir condenser can be 60 microfarads so whoever did replace that hopefully they did consult the data sheet and, and they're certainly well within that spec but one does have to wonder if a contributory factor of that open circuit filament uh, was uh, increasing the value of the, the condenser. Data sheet says not and maybe I'm completely wrong maybe there's an entirely different reason um, but over time maybe it did act as a, a little bit more stress on the valve so who knows um, so a little bit of um, sort of investigation work there onto what was going on. So next job is to get her on uh, the Variac and see if we've still got um, a living radio. Now um, I've replaced all those parts and then um, after that, fingers crossed, uh, we can start looking at an alignment. Okay, well here we are back with the underside of the uh, Pi 18D and um, I've, I've not got it powered up at the moment, simply so I can point things out without having to worry too much about um, high voltages. Uh, but I've had it powered up. Um, there is life coming out the speaker. Um, it seems to be still working okay, so I haven't done too much damage by changing the capacitors. Um, and I've been around and checked all the voltages, and uh, the certainly the voltage coming off the transformer um, was, was a little high. So what I've done is I've changed the... Uh, voltage selector to the to the highest voltage range, and I'm now within a few volts of of what the uh, I'd expect for the two um, high tension uh, uh, supplies to the two anodes on the rectifier valve. And been through all the um, anode voltages, and they're all um, pretty reasonable, and not too far away from uh, from what the um, service data is telling me. So uh, that's a good start. So I think. Um, Next uh, job is to start having a look at uh, the IF and see what the uh, alignment's looking like. Uh, as you can see, there's a great number of um, uh, coils here for tuning the uh, the front end and also for tuning the oscillator. Um, there's a lot of wave bands, a lot of variable, um, a lot of transformers, variable inductors, and plenty of trimmer capacitors here. So um, I'm sort of approaching that with a bit of trepidation as. Uh, I suspect that's going to be uh, quite complicated, but um, pleased that she's still working after uh, after the work that I've done. Okay, so I'm just going to check some uh, anode voltages on the Pi 19D. Now I've replaced a load of components. So first of all, try V1, which I think is there. Yeah, 262. Um, yeah. Okay, that's absolutely fine. That's the kind of number I was expecting. Let's try V2. Yeah, almost exactly the same. That's also good. Okay, not quite so easy to get to V3. Would expect that to be around, yeah, that's around 100. That's as expected. That's good. Um, and finally, if I can spot the right connection ok 
Yeah, 297. So that's uh, again, yeah, 280 is what the chart is suggesting. So 297 is uh, near enough for jazz. That's good. Um, right, that's all the uh, anode voltages checked. So next thing to do is. Uh, uh, some kind of alignment. So I'm going to start with the IF. So I'll now, uh, I now get set up for IF alignment. Okay, so I've got my uh, FET voltmeter, analog voltmeter, hooked up to the uh, output of the speaker. I've got an um, intermediate frequency tone uh, being injected uh, through a 0.1 microfarad capacitor as per the uh, instructions in the uh, tune up guide. Um, I've unplugged the speaker, I'm sure you don't want to listen to this. That is the uh, the modulated tone, definitely there. And I've got my um, non-metallic trimming tool, so there's two IF cans, this one and this one. So I'm going to start with the one nearest to the antenna. And I'm just going to, for no reason other than it's the easiest to get to, I'm going to start with the uh, trimmer which is on the bottom. And all I'm doing here is peaking for, is tuning for the highest number I can get. Yeah, it's coming up nicely. Easy enough. Yeah, that's about the peak on that side. So I'm now going to go back to the top of that can and just see if I can uh, get any kind of improvement on the top of the can. Um, it's, it's not like, that easy to get hold of so I'm just rotating the top slug see if I can make any difference at all to that. There are a few little variations but don't seem to be making very much difference. The bottom one was clearly the one that was um, Having the most effect. Okay, so that's the first IF can. We'll now go to the second one, which is there. Not terribly easy to get to. Um, apologies if I'm in front of the camera while I'm just finding the connection there. So tune in that second can, and all that's doing is actually uh, making it worse, which so that looks like that was probably about right. Again, apologies if I'm uh, creeping into the frame. I don't mean to. I just can't see where I'm putting the, the trimmer tool. Let's just move the radio slightly and see if we can improve that at all. No, if anything, that's making it worse. So I'll go back to where it was. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah, there's a bit of a peak, a bit more there. I'll come right to the end of the trimmer actually, so I can't do any more. So we'll just try the top of that one. So that's the second can, top slug. Ah uh, yeah, okay, so we're going to just turn the volume down so we've got more signal to play with. Yeah, we've got a little bit of improvement there though. That was the peak there, yeah. Okay, and we'll just go back to the first one just to make absolutely sure that we've got it um, as good as we're going to get. Yeah, certainly the bottom one's about right. Let's just try the top one once more. Uh, just uh, not the easiest things to get your uh, trimming tool onto actually. Um, right, here we go. No, that's not making any difference. Okay, so that's about right. This should be fairly deafening now. We'll just try it. Yeah, okay. So that's the IF done. Um, next job is to um, align the uh, oscillators and the um, RF stages. There's an awful lot of alignment to do on the uh, on the various stages because of the, uh, the number of bands on this radio. So. Uh, that should keep me happy for a bit. Right, IF done. That's a good start. 
Okay, well that's pretty much it for part two of the Pi 19D restoration. It's obviously going to become quite a long video if I continue with the, the RF alignment. So I'll do that in the next video and hopefully start having a look at the case. Um, hopefully this has been useful and you've seen one or two things regarding uh, alignment of the RF, use of signal generator, etc. So if you'd like the video, please click thumbs up. If not, click the thumbs down. Either way, it'd be great if you could subscribe. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.